Now the majority of this shelf is going to be made using 18 millimeter thick birch plywood. It's a really nice quality of plywood. It's the first time I'm using this properly. So I'm looking forward to giving it a go. The first thing I'm going to do is mark the side pieces to the drawer. I need those to be three and a half centimeters wide. So I'll be able to mark those up, drop my track saw on and get them cut to size. I need another piece cut to this size. So I'll be able to offer this one up Make sure it's flush on all three sides. And then I can mark a line and make sure that this next piece will be exactly the same thickness. The next piece that I'm cutting is 15 centimetres wide and that's going to form the bottom to the drawer. The last piece that I'm gonna cut for now is the top to the shelf. Now that's actually on this side. So what I'm cutting free on this side is waste. This is gonna be kept though because this will be forming the drawer front. I'm not gonna cut it now, I'm gonna cut it later on in the project. That way I can be sure of the sizes and make sure that it's a nice snug fit. So this piece will form the top to our shelf. With the pieces for the drawers cut to width, I now need to cut them to length. It's gonna be a lot easier to do that on the mitre saw. So I'm going to start off by making sure this first edge is nice and square. And then as this piece is the draw bottom, I'm going to make this the full 50 centimetres long. And that'll be the bottom to the draw. Now I have already squared up the edge on the side pieces. So I'm going to offer these up now. Rather than measuring, measuring can always cause mistakes. I'm going to make sure it's flush at the back, flush at the sides, and then just use my pencil to strike a mark where I need to cut it to length. That's going to be much more accurate than just trying to measure and mark it. That should feel nice and flush at both ends now. I need another piece cut to this size. I've got the start of the drawer laid out here. So I've got the drawer bottom, I've got the back and the front piece, and I'm just making sure that they're flush at the sides. I can then use the same method as I just did. Rather than measuring, I'm going to offer up one of the side pieces and I'm going to use my pencil to mark where it needs to be cut to. Rather than getting this measurement with the tape measure, it's going to be a lot more accurate this way. The last piece to cut to size is the top shelf itself and that's going to be cut to 65 centimetres. Before I start on the draw construction I'm going to first give all the inside faces a light sanding. It's going to be a lot easier to get to them now so I'll do it now then get the draw constructed. The outside faces can be sanded later. For the draw construction I'm going to keep it really really simple. I'm just going to be using some glue and screws. It's not going to be under a lot of stress so this is going to be more than enough. To help hold everything in place I'm going to use a couple of clamps. Don't have to do this but it's better than an extra pair of hands. So with the clamps holding it flush I'm going to drill pilot holes through to make it easier to apply the screws. With the holes in place, I'll add a small amount of glue to the ends. And then I can secure the pieces back together with a screw in each corner. With the outer frame to the drawer done now, I can add a bead of glue around the bottom edge. Then I can add the bottom into place, make sure it's flush at the edges. Then I can add some pilot holes for screws. I'll also counter sink them to make sure the heads of the screws are below the surface. Then I can finally add the screws. And that is the body to the drawer done. I'll get this glue squeeze out all cleaned up and then we can move on to the next step. This really thick piece of MDF is roughly 30 millimetres thick and this is going to be used to form the sides to the shelf. I've cut it to 18 centimetres wide. I'll be able to cut it to length now on the chop saw. I need two pieces cut to 15 centimetres long. So I've made a bit of an adjustment to these. I originally cut them so they'd be 18 centimetres deep to the shelf 
and 15 centimeters high, but they looked a bit too high to me. So I've cut a bit off the top and now them 12 centimeters high by still that 18 centimeters deep. I think that's gonna be a much better size. Now these side pieces, the Malkai has the amp, but I wanna add a nice rounded profile to the front. So I'm gonna use a round over bit to do that. I'm gonna use this 18 volt palm router that Trend very kindly sent me. It's not a sponsored video, but I will leave a link in the description down below if you wanna check it out. I'll also leave affiliate links to all of the tools I've used in this project. If you end up buying from those links, I'll get a small percentage, so it really helps me out. I think that'll make a massive difference. These side pieces, I'm actually gonna get covered with some fabric and I've had a bit of an idea for how I can hide the join at the back. So I've swapped over to a slot cutting bit and I'm gonna route a slot in the centre on the back of both side pieces. I should be able to tuck the fabric into those slots now and then back it up with a thin strip of wood. I might add a nice bit of walnut or I might just cheap out and paint some MDF. But either way, I think it'll be a neater edge for when I wrap the fabric round. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna be adding some fabric to these side pieces. Now I'm gonna be using this fabric. It's kind of like a linen effect. I really like it. It's a charcoal black color as well. So I think it should go with the theme. Now to attach it, I'm gonna be using some contact adhesive. Now I have just used spray adhesive in the past and that works really well, but it can seep through and leave blotchy. So I'm hoping that this contact adhesive will work a little bit better. Now I can leave this to fully dry and I'll be able to come back and trim off the excess. Now I can add some nice magenta felt to the bottom. It'll neaten up the edges and it'll stop it scuffing the desk. I did opt for using MDF in the end and I've gone ahead and I've spray painted it magenta. To secure it in place, I'm just gonna add some super glue just across the fabric where the groove sits in place. It doesn't really need this because it is a nice snug fit, but a little dab won't hurt. Scrap bit of ply to protect it and tap it flush. I think that creates a really nice neat edge to the fabric now. Matches in nicely and it's a nice little touch. Don't see it because it's at the back, but if you end up looking around the back of the shelf, it's a nice little detail. So I went ahead and I sanded the drawer again. It's all nice and smooth. And I'm gonna get the drawer slides attached now before I think about any finish. If I mess it up, I can still fill it and sand it back. So I think it's best to do it at this stage. The drawer slides I'm using are full extension ball bearing drawer slides. These ones I picked up off Amazon. I will leave a link in the description if you wanna check them out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna attach them to the drawer itself first. I'm gonna make sure that the drawer slide is sitting nice and flush on the bottom and I wanna make sure that this front piece to the slide is flush to the front of the drawer as well. When I'm happy with that, I'll be able to extend it a bit further and mark where I need to put a screw. To make it easier to attach these slides into place, you can actually unlock the piece that gets attached to the drawer. You'll find a little plastic lever. If you push that to one side, then it releases and you can remove that part to the drawer slide. Now we can get this side attached to the sides we made earlier. I'm gonna actually have the drawer positioned towards the top of these side pieces. So to make it easier on myself, I'm gonna flip all of this over. So I can flip the drawer over end to end and I can flip the side piece over end to end. So I can make sure that the drawer doesn't scratch the top or get caught. I'm gonna lift it up a bit and I'm just gonna use a scrap piece of six mil MDF. It's probably a little bit overkill for this, but it's all I've got lying around, so it'll do. So I wanna make sure that the back of the drawer slide is flush with the back to the side piece that we made earlier. So I'm gonna fully extend it and I'm gonna use a scrap piece of plywood just to make sure that it is in fact sitting flush towards the back. With that sorted, I can drill a couple of pilot holes and secure it with screws.
with that sorted, we can think about sorting out the top. So what I'm thinking for the top is to keep it quite simple. I do actually want to add a bit of a round over to these front corners and I'm going to add a slight under bevel as well. So first I'm going to mark that round over. I'm just going to grab something that I think is about the right radius. This is actually a bit of super glue. Offer it up to the corner and then just mark around it with a pencil. Then I can remove that corner and I should have a nice little round corner. To create the under bevel, I'll flip the top over so the top to the top is actually facing down. And I'm going to be using a 45 degree chamfer bit in the rotor just to create that under bevel. For the finish on the top, I'm going to be using the same stuff that I used on my desktop. And that's going to be the Ruby on Mono Coat Chocolate Colour. Right, so, drawers done, tops done, sides and reattached. I've now got to attach the shelf to the top. And how am I going to do that? Well, I'm actually going to use some dowels. Keep it nice and simple. So what I've got here, they're actually eight millimetre dowels, but I'm going to drill six millimetre holes first. And the reason for that is because I've got some centre finders. Now these are for six millimetre size dowels, but it'll work the same. So I'm going to drill a couple of holes into these side pieces drop these centre finders into them. I'll then be able to offer it up to the top, give it a whack, and then it should leave two points exactly where I need to drill in the top for the dells to meet up. Once I've done that, I'll then be able to drill the holes to eight millimetres wide, and then I can use these eight millimetre dells. Whack some wood glue on, Stick it together, jobs are good. I can leave that to dry now. So I've gone ahead and I've cut the drawer front to size, but I need to think about what am I going to use as a bit of a grip to be able to open the drawer. Of course you could use a drawer knob, a little handle, I want it to look as sleek as possible. So what I'm going to opt for is to cut another under bevel, not as big as the others I've been doing, and with the overhang of the drawer front just slightly underneath the drawer itself, it'll give me enough purchase to be able to open the drawer. That's the idea anyway. So I think I'm ready to glue the drawer front on now. This is still drying, but it's dry enough for this application. So I just need to stick it into place. I'm gonna make sure that the little reveal around the edge, the slight gap, is just the same by eye. Now you probably see I've got bare wood there and bare wood here. That is so the wood glue will set properly. If it was on the oil and then if you've got any kind of wax, anything like that, wood glue will not work the same. So you've always got to be gluing bare wood to bare wood. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some blobs of regular wood glue. Now this is where the real strength is going to come from. But the problem with wood glue is it can take quite a while to set up, especially when you haven't got anything like clamps or anything else that you can wipe down to hold it in place. So to help speed up the gluing process, I'm also going to use some super glue. Now you've got the benefits of super glue, it sets really quickly but it's not the strongest option on wood. So making sure you've got wood glue in there as well gives you the best of both worlds. To speed up the process even more, you can use an activator. I'm just gonna spray a little bit of this. Now, when this comes into contact with the super glue, it should make it set almost instantly. So I'm gonna to have to move quick with this. Wish me luck. Now with any luck, that super glue is set. And I can leave this now for the wood glue to properly set as well. Then it'll be maximum strength and really quick setting. Okay, so the drawer front's glued on now. It's nice and solid, especially for this application. It's such a small drawer. That's all it's going to need. If you was making a bigger drawer, if it was going to be holding a lot of weight, you could always come in after and add a few screws to the back just to give it a bit more strength. But this will be plenty strong enough. 
as you can see the bottom looks a bit of a mess at the minute so i'm going to add some felt and of course it goes without saying i've got to use some magenta felt haven't i so i've cut this a little bit oversized i'm just going to tuck it into place and create some creases where it's going to fall So now I've got the felt cut to size, I can glue it in place. I'm just going to be using some spray adhesive. It's going to be plenty strong enough for this and it's nice and easy to apply as well. I think that makes a massive difference. It's going to be a lot nicer to keep all the little bits and bobs. It shouldn't make as much noise rattling around. Should stop them sliding as well. Plus, now I've got an extra pop of colour. So that's the desk tidy shelf drawer thing done. Now, traditionally, you could probably call this a monitor stand. So if you've got a regular computer monitor, usually them a little bit low, not great for eye level. So it's always better to get it up high. I've got my monitor on a monitor arm, so I don't really need to use it as a stand. But the shelf on top still gives me space to store little bits and bobs. The drawer, obviously ideal for things like my cables, SD cards, hard drives, any kind of dongles that I need. They can all be stored in there out the way. Plus, I've still got space underneath to tuck bits and bobs out the way as well. So any charging cables, any other bits and bobs that would usually clutter up my desk, they can go under there as well. And I'm genuinely well chuffed with how I managed to get the fabric actually attached, stick it on, but then tucking it in at the back with that little bit of magenta MDF, I think it sets it off nicely. I know it's at the back, you'll never see it, but I know it's there and I know it's nice and neat. The drawer works really well with those ball bearing drawer slides. Gives me nice and easy access to all my stuff and it keeps it out of sight, out of mind, nice and clear. I really hope that you like this one and I hope you give it a go for yourself. This could be used in all different applications, not just for a desk. You could put it on your entertainment unit, maybe slip something under like a DVD player, the PlayStation, Xbox, all that kind of stuff and still maintain a flat surface on top. So if you give it a go, let me know in the comments down below and let me know what you think about the design. I really hope that you like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you click that subscribe button and then click the little bell icon next to it. That way you'll never miss a video whenever I upload one. And if you like it, don't forget, hit that like button and I'll catch you on the next one.